Another one struggle that we oftentimes hear when it comes to scaling is kind of how do you get the company from founder-led sales, which would be you, and going from shop to shop, trying to convince them how wonderful Edgar and Cooper is, to really scaling that across a sales organization. What would be some of the advice that you would give scale-up entrepreneurs in that sense? Like, how do you do this in an effective manner? Yeah, I must say, I look back at that period uh, with great passion. In the early days, I was standing myself in the shop on Saturday and Sunday and really selling the product to the end consumer. So I do miss the early <laughs> days from time to time. Um, but, but even today, we, as founders, we continue to be very involved. Like if a big retailer wants to sit together with the team, uh, they always appreciate it that a co-founder joins into that meeting to sort of give them a company update. So I, I, I try to have the finger on the pulse and be, be very much involved. But of course, over time, I've built a sales team of about 70 people now. Uh, more than half of those people are uh, in their cars driving to the stores on a daily basis. And I think there's a lot of learnings on how you manage that. You need to make sure that that field sales capability is managed properly. Over time, I've also added a sales uh, lead layer. Um, those people are helping me as direct reports with some of the core regions in Europe. They're also helping me on key sales, pricing, trade and shopper strategies. And as such, uh, I have divided the European market in two different regions and I have those leads that are helping me to manage the sales team over time. So building a structure that makes sense for your business uh, is, is highly relevant so that you as a founder can make sure to focus on some of the bigger uh, aspects of the business. So indeed you say structure and designing the team, let's say yeah. in a way that it, that it helps you. Um, but I assume there's probably also some component there in terms of, of training and onboarding them. And when you say that field sales team, how did you spread the Jurgen wisdom on how to co-sell yeah. in those pet shops? Yeah, um, th th there's multiple ways. Uh, initially there's that founder passion that you, you show how you pitch it. And mm -hmm. when there's a new product that's being launched, you sort of take the pitch and you develop the pitch and you show how it's done. But at some time you become quite big um, and then you need to create playbooks. Um, one of the things we work with is Notion. It's a knowledge-based platform in the business. And on Notion, on that knowledge base, you can find uh, playbooks in sales, marketing, operations. Within sales, for example, you would find the pitch on, if we launch a new product, how does that look like? What are the key arguments to use when you're sitting in front of a decision maker at your at the customer side? So creating playbooks, not making them too complicated, <laughs> because that could go very far, is something that, uh, that worked quite well for us. What criteria did, did you guys use in selecting your investors? Yeah, so I think the type of investor depends on what is your objective. Do you really want to conquer Europe in X amount of years, or do you believe I want to build a success first closer to home and expand later? So I think it, it, depend, it depends a little bit on the ambition. Uh, that will also define the amount of money that you will require to grow that business. For us, it was really important that if we decide to bring someone on board, that we're not just raising money, um, but really have people around the table that can add value to some of these conversations. Think about uh, knowledge around digital expertise, uh, commercial, but also supply chain. If you can surround yourself with people that um, provide funds, but also bring that value to us, that was one of the key criteria. And then maybe the latter um, is around, we are a mission-driven business. Um, you might have that question coming, but we have raised money with the Craftery. They're based in London and are very much focused on uh, mission-driven businesses. Um, we wanted to find somebody that understands that we're here with a bigger purpose. Investors that don't have a five to seven years horizon, but that can go on that journey with you and understand that you're truly doing this to change the consumer space. So that were the two you know, most important criteria when we were raising uh, funds for Edgar and Cooper. And when you say that that mission and that, that purpose that you have, is that then also the reason why you went for that B certification? You're now a B corporation. Yeah. Is that the key reason? Yeah, exactly. Um, we decided already very early in the journey that we wanted to do better in terms of the way we treat animals, uh, the type of products we provide and the packaging that we use. And along the journey, uh, becoming a B Corp, where you're basically taking steps in terms of your commitments to your employees, but also the commitments to the society, made a lot of sense for us. And because of B Corp, we had to take interesting people decisions. We are fully committed to the foundation of Edgar and Cooper. And it's a platform. It's a platform of a collective of 
global companies, there's about 2,000 that have the same objectives. It's to really provide value for society. And, and, and I'm very proud that we were able to get the B Corp certificate uh, last year, to be honest.